Kingdom. Yo, what's good? It's your boy AJ. I'm here with Rage. I'm here with Cypher. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Nets Kingdom One. And we got articles on Nets Kingdom that met. Check those articles out. Yes. So today we're talking about Keon Johnson. He's been a, a fan favorite in this summer league. A lot of people say we should be signing Keon, um, give him a contract because uh, the Nets have one um, guaranteed contract, standard contract left. But a little background on Keon Johnson. Um, came out of Tennessee. He was drafted at pick in the first round, pick 21 uh, in 2021. Uh, he he was a traveler. He was a journeyman. I think he was with the Knicks, Blazers, Phoenix, a couple of teams. But Keon's game, um, again, he's a point guard, 6'5". Uh, I guess what would you describe his game to you, Rage, when he first kind of looked at Keon? Because first we thought he was a defensive point guard. But then he's starting to show more tools with the scoring. But what your what was your thoughts on Keon, though? So Keon instantly, like I, I didn't really like my instant thought when we when we got into this summer league when we watched him play. Yeah. He was a guy that was he was the only guy in that Pacers game in the beginning that was consistently willing to take a shot and yeah. go in the paint and drive and yeah. and just like just shoot the ball. He was a guy, and he was you know, trying to facilitate as well, but he was the guy that was actually going down and trying to get a bucket. Yeah, He was that actual point guard that, for us, he was the actual point guard for us. Like, Gilliard wasn't really doing it, and but it was, it was, it was, it was Johnson when he was, yeah. when he was involved and he, you know, had some high, and some high scoring games and, you know, we talked about it before we got on, before we got on here, that, you know, was also a pretty solid point of attack defender as well, but his offense has kind of outshined his defense, like completely. Yeah. Yeah, because I think now he's kind of making a statement. Um, because I know he he had we gave him a two way deal. Um, it says here on the NBA that we gave him a two way. Uh, let's sign Johnson to a two way deal on Tuesday, October thirty first, twenty twenty three. So we gave him that two way deal, and I think getting into the league. I mean, coming into the league, I don't think he was really um known like that for like his scoring. Um, but. You can show he put some work in in the summer league, and he's showing that he can score at all three levels, which was impressive, bro. Like the three point shooting, and then the middies. Um, I remember he hit that game winner, the game winner midi. His signature shot is like a fadeaway turnaround fadeaway. That turnaround, that little turnaround. yeah, the turnaround fadeaways is a signature, and then that game winner, it's like he just pulled. It's very interesting because, like I told y'all before, this this um, stream, like that's a dying breed, like that in between game where you can post up. Turn around, fade away. It's just that mid-range action is just so it's a dying breed because everybody just wants to shoot threes or dunk. So it's like now he's showing us all his like talents. But what do you think Keon's um he's not eligible for a two-way side, right? So what do you think Keon's path is? Do you think other teams are noticing this? Um, do you think the Nets have to give him a guaranteed, or what do you think his options are going forward? So regarding Keon, I think he is, you know, he, he's a low risk, high reward signing. You know, yeah. he reminds me of the same mindset we were in when we signed Dinwiddie, when we signed Harris. Yeah. You know, give him a multi year, non guaranteed deal, you know, similar to Joe and Wilson, and see what he can do. You know, I think he's more of a combo guard. Yeah. He's got a decent size, six five. Uh, broke the combine record for the highest vertical inch, uh, v- vertical jump, uh, wow. forty eight inches. Got some high Can we, okay. Got very some high athletic level. player. You know, gets great elevation. You know, it's why he's so, you know, explosive on both ends, you know. Yeah. Could create his own shot, drive to the paint, you know, get some really nice highlight blocks, some steals. You know, there is some some discipline issues regarding the defense. You know, he could yeah. be a little bit, you know, foul prone, a little over, you know, overexcited. Over over aggressive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you like to see it. You like to see the effort. You know, I'd rather see, I'd rather have a player foul out because he's too excited than have zero fouls and be bad defensively. 
that's a great point that you made because like I told y'all before, there's just some moments like this is I think why the Nets are three and one because the defense at times they be locking up the perimeter. Like that combination of Keon, Clowney switching, and then um Jalen Wilson. Sometimes they get into this groove defensively and they're really clamping teams, bro. And Keon's a big part of that because Keon be getting he he does gamble, like you said, which is a disciplined thing. And he's what is he, 22? So that's he can learn from that. But when he puts pressure on like all full court and he's counting these guys, he gets steals and he gets into their um their airspace and it really impacts, it gives us great stops, like timely stops, and then it helps us get back into the games. Cause we'll be like some games will be so bad in the first quarter, second quarter, but then the Nets just keep climbing back. And I think it's a lot of it is because of the defense at times, bro. They be locking teams up from runs. And Keon's are like just a big part of that. But I really want to see what the Nets do going forward with Keon. Like, are we going to, like, give him a guaranteed or because it's like, I think other teams might notice this and might put him. We've seen this before where some teams just snatch guys and they take guys onto their team or do, or um, they steal some of the uh, Nets players. But it's like this season coming up, I think he would be perfect because we're rebuilding. We know he doesn't have any pressure on him. If we fully go young, what pressure does Keon have? You know, he's just going to come in and work hard and develop just like the other young guys his age. You know, and it'll just be kind of a gelling kind of thing going forward. Uh, yeah, yeah, Keon is just going to be – he could be able to be a backup point guard for us. I feel like in his – in in the best-case scenario where we're in a rebuilding situation, yeah. Keon Johnson could be our backup point guard. Obviously, there's still Shake Milton. There's still Ben Simmons. Who, who knows? But – in a, in a dream case scenario, Keon Johnson could be your backup point guard and you could get some real development out of that. And yeah. like like you mentioned and we've talked about, he's still only 22 years old and we've been able to actually see the potential of his offense and his defense. So yeah. if he's able to keep this up and we're able to give him some type of like, you know, even some like two year non guaranteed deal or even you just give him a one year guaranteed deal to just give it to him mm-hmm. because, you know, what do you have to lose? in the situation that we're in if we're fully rebuilding. Yeah. I definitely think that it should be at least, like I said, I think I said you this, I think like one uh, one year guaranteed and then the second year it could be maybe like a non-guaranteed or a player option. I'm not trying to, what deal did they give Jalen Wilson? I don't think they gave Jalen Wilson like a three year, but Keon, I think it would be more short term because like I said, we're going to have a lot of draft picks coming up. So I'd rather him just be, if he really excels, I'll think about next year, but then we'll see how things shape out with the draft and see if Sean goes for a, a big point guard or goes for a point guard in the draft. So we'll see. That's why I don't want to give him anything more than three. So if we did give him a, a, a signing. But, Kasai, what do you think? Um, I'm, not, contract? I'm not too worried about, you know, a contract because mm-hmm. he'll be making so little money, you know, because given where he's at in his career. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe three years, six million, partially guaranteed. So, mm. you know, worst case scenario, you waive them, you know, mm. cost you nothing. Yeah. Keon, something that does impress me about Keon Johnson is that this summer league, he is averaging 5.8 assists per game. Oof, yeah. And just being yeah. a consistent creator, you know, driving and kicking. Yeah. And, you know, a big concern with him was his jump shot. But, you know, he, he's been, he's so young, like he's gotten better at it, you know, yeah. in the NBA. He's a career 35% three-point shooter, 82 games. And in the G League, like with Long Island last year, 26-game sample size, shot 38% on five attempts. So he wow. could shoot. He could drive to the rim. He's 6'4", six, 6'5", six, so he's got size, extremely athletic. Like this is a player, even if we draft very well next year, like this is a player that will have value if yeah. we could take, if he could really pan out the way we want him to. Yeah. And yeah, the right he's, to, just, yeah. he's only 22, and we was just picked, and he was picked in the same draft as Cam Thomas in 2021, and was picked 21st. Yeah, you know he was ju- he was not even picked that high not that long ago. You know he was he was just picked at you know 20 21. Yeah, and I was gonna, ago. yeah, and that's a great point that Scythe made because now that the next, like I said, we we need a point guard for the future. You know, Ben and Dennis are gonna be gone next year. In 2025, did their last. This is their last year, so it's like we're gonna need a point guard for the future. And this could be one of those guys with the right situation, the right system, the development. Um, he could turn into a good point guard for us. And I realized tonight, right? I think he would. He have eight, eight assists or nine assists. Ten assists. A lot of, 
nine assists. A lot of these um, assists he's getting was key for uh, why Jalen Wilson was so good tonight because Jalen Wilson works off catch and shoot threes, and Jalen had six threes tonight. A lot of these assists was coming from Keon too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these assists was coming from Keon's um, pass and kick. So it's like that ability to facilitate, it just makes me really um, happy to see because we need something like this on the Nets, and we'll see going forward what they do. But make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, follow us on Twitter. Uh, all our Twitter is going at the bottom. Follow Cypher on Twitter, on Twitter too, NetCypher. Um, we got articles dropping at NetsKingdom.net. Make sure you type in NetsKingdom.net. We have articles there. You can check out the articles. Uh, Sean Mark article, McHale articles. Um, and then follow us on Instagram and hit that like button. Appreciate you guys so much. We'll see what the Nets do with Keon and going forward to Summer League. I appreciate you guys so much.